So <clears throat> if we're trying to find the intervals of concavity and the, sec and the points of inflection, we know we're going to want to use the second derivative test. So let's go ahead and find the second derivative. <clears throat> first thing we need to do is find the first derivative. So that's going to be cosine of x. Second derivative is going to be negative sine of x. Right? Now again, we're trying to find, figure out when this is equal to 0. Now it's important, when we're doing our second derivative test, we're going to be plugging those values into negative sine of x. Okay? So just make sure we understand that's our second derivative. But to solve for this, we are going to take 0 equals negative sine of x. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. Sine of x is equal to 0. And then we think of our unit circle and say, all right, sine of x is equal to 0. That's going to be at what values? Sine of x is equal to 0. At what values? OK, let's go to our unit circle. Do, do, do. We know here's a point which is 0, comma, I'm sorry, which is 1, comma, 0. Right? And where else? 1, comma, 0. What about pi? What about 2 pi? But what we notice, guys, we could say sine of x equals 0 at x equals 0, x equals pi, and x equals 2 pi. Now, why am I including all these? Well, guys, these are all in your, your constraint, right? Obviously, if we, didn't have a closed, if we didn't have a closed interval here, I would just continue to keep on going to infinity, right? I would have to keep on like adding solutions. But they closed it. However, look at our graph. Guys, can we have a point of inflection at an endpoint? Can we have a change in concavity at an endpoint? No. So we don't need to include 0 or 2 pi. We only need to worry about x is equal to uh, pi. So now we go into our table. We know that our possible point of inflection is at um, pi. All right, And now let's just check a point to the left and to the right. So again, we want to kind of use our endpoints here. We don't need to check because that's where it kind of ends. So a good angle between 0 and pi, Dane, what would you say? What's a good angle to choose between 0 and pi? Pi over what? OK, pi over 2. Pi over 2 is right here. That's pretty easy, right? I kind of like that one. 0 comma 1. Is sine positive or negative? Is sine positive or negative? Yep, very good. OK, and then between pi and 2 pi, how about we do this one over here? Does that sound like a good angle, this angle from there to there? This is pi halves, 2 pi halves. This would have to be 3 pi halves. Good, I like 3 pi halves. 3 pi halves is 0 comma negative 1. Oh, that's negative. Right? So therefore, we can say um, y has an inflection. We're going to say value, because we're not going to give the points. Oh, and I say give the determinant value and points of inflection. Sorry about that. I did say the point of inflection. So we're not looking for the value. We're looking for the point, right? So what would it be at pi? If I was going to take this, if I was going to plug in pi, then at, at um, pi, my point would be where? If I plug in pi into this function, what do I get? Oh, wait a minute. Sorry about this. I totally forgot, guys. We've got to be careful. What is this function? It's negative, right? I made my mistake. When you plug in pi halves, you get positive 1, right? But then you have to multiply it by a negative, correct? So this is actually from negative to positive. Be very, very careful. I did that, and I kind of totally forgot about making my mistake on there. So yes, you evaluate for sine. But then you got to remember, you got to multiply by the negative. And I totally forgot about it. I apologize. So be very careful with that, because that will trip you up. Um, now, it did say find the point of inflection, not the value. So we got to find the point. So if we plug in pi here, this, um, if we plug in pi, the sign at pi is going to be, so this point, um, if we plug in pi, we get sine of pi is? 0 times a negative is 0, right? 
So y has an inflection point at pi comma 0 cents. So just make sure, you guys, if they're talking about points, you've got to give the points. If they say the value, you could just say x equals whatever the value is. Make sure you know the difference. y has an inflection point at pi comma 0 cents f double prime changes from negative to positive. It's not really important if it's changing from positive to negative, negative to positive, because all we're doing is asking for concavity, right? Um, so it's not as important to do it. So, but I would prefer that you just write it out. It's just a good habit to write that out rather than saying the sign, the sign changes, right? Because you can't say the sign changes for the first derivative test. So why don't we just tell, say exactly what it does? It's changing from negative to positive, OK? Um, and then we got to look at our, um, our concavity. So we could say f is concave up. Now let's do down. f is concave down on, um, f is concave down on 0 to pi. If we wanted to do a justification, we could say since f double prime is less than 0, and f is concave up on pi to 2 pi. Since f double prime is greater than 0. Okay, it didn't say it didn't say to justify your points of concavity, but or your intervals of concavity, but I just figured in case that happens, that's what we'd have to write. 